All right, so let's see here. Um, when I subtract fractions, I have to get a common denominator. So these two denominators are different, so I will just choose that as my common denominator. X minus five and X plus two together. So to make this common denominator, I look here. X minus five is here. It did not have X plus two. So I have to give X plus two to this because I'm giving X plus two to that one. All right, down here I need to give this X minus five to make it match, so I'm giving this X minus five. So basically the numerator becomes four times X plus two minus 2x times x minus 5. So I think I'll just work that out at the top there and then um, it'll be ready to simplify. So I have um, 4x plus 8 and then here don't forget negative so negative 2x squared and then plus 10x so don't forget that x right there. Okay so negative 2x squared is first 4x and 10x make positive 14x then 8 and don't forget to put your denominator back because that was the point it's a common denominator to make one fraction right, so then you're done you don't have to multiply this out you don't need to factor that unless you notice on a multiple choice that you know one of these things is missing and then it canceled so all right over here to be able to see what the denominators are, I have to factor them. So this is x plus 2 and x minus 2 because it's difference of squares. Um, what makes 10 but also makes 3 is x plus 5 and x minus 2. All right. So look, they share an x minus 2, so that's going to be part of my common denominator. But this guy wants x plus 2 and this guy wants x plus 5. All right, so going off what we did over there, if I look here, it's all there except x plus 5. So 3x is going to get x plus 5 plus the 3 he has this one and this one so I'm going to give him x plus 2 so I would have had to give those to the bottom so I gave it to the top all right so I get 3x squared plus 15x and then here plus 3x plus 6 so to simplify that I get 3x squared plus 18x plus 6 and on the bottom, x minus 2, x plus 2, and x plus 5. Now I do notice that all these divide by 3, so let me just think for a second. If I take a 3 out, that'd be x squared plus 6x plus 2. And you know, nothing that makes 2 makes 6, so this can't factor anymore. And frankly, then I can't cancel it with anything. So that's why I know I'm finished here. Okay. Down here, we got two division problems. So this is a division problem, um, and so is this guy. So when you do these, um, let's factor everything up. So this x plus 2 is not going to change, but down here, what multiplies a 5 and makes 4 is x minus 5 and x plus 1. As I flip this around, I'm going to change it to multiplication. This is going to be on top now. So the numerator, I'm going to factor that is perfect squares. So x plus 1 and x minus 1. And then this 3x plus 6 is going down here. But don't forget, um, they have a 3 in common, so you have to take that out. So divide a 3 out, you would get x plus 2. All right, and now you start to see some canceling. So there, 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 and I'm finished. So x minus 1 is all by itself. On the denominator, I have a 3 and an x minus 5. All right. So this is also a division problem. So just like we did the reciprocal of the second fraction, I'm going to do that here. So the first fraction is this. Then the second fraction changes to multiplication and it flips over. So it does a reciprocal. So 8r squared is going to be on top and 6 minus r on the bottom. Okay, so these cancel, but they produce a negative, right? Like a negative 1. I'd like to put it on that 8. 8 and 24 reduce to a 1 and a 3. And I have R2 and R7, so that means all these R's are gone and there's going to be 5 left here. So up top, um, I have nothing on top except this negative sign and I have to put the 1 there to kind of hold the place. So negative 1. If it was like an, if there was like an R squared here, I could just put like negative R squared, but since 1 is the only thing up there, so I have to put the 1. On the denominator, I have 3 and R to the 5th. There we go. 
right, multiplication problem. So um, I do not need to do the reciprocal back here. So this guy, I noticed that um, 3 and x can come out. So once I do that, that gives me x uh, minus 3. On the bottom, 3 comes out, gives me x minus 4. Over here, 4 minus x does not change. And this guy, so this looks suspicious here. Let me take a 2 out, which is me x squared minus 9, and that's perfect squares. So that's going to have to factor more, x plus 3 and x minus 3. All right, so let me cancel these and make a negative, right, because they're up. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Okay, so those cancel. These right here make the negative. I was getting ahead of myself. All right, um, looks like these threes cancel. I think I'm done. So negative x over just a 2 and an x plus 3. There we go. All right, back to some solving here. So a square root, remember a square root can't equal a negative. So if this turns negative, it's not going to be any good. But by adding 4, it does not change to a negative. So 3x plus, or minus, shoot, 3x minus 5 goes in here, equals 5. So now, time to square both sides. So 3x minus 5 pops out, and I get 25. Add 5, get 30, and get 10. So if you plug 10 back in here, um, you get 30 minus 5, which is a square root of 25. So that's 5. 5 minus 4 is 1. All right? So solution set, 10. Okay. All right, over here, divide by 5 to get rid of that. x minus 7 to the 1 third equals 4. So number 1 third is a cube root. So to get rid of or to, to counteract a cube root, I do a cube power, All right, the reciprocal power. So these cancel out. I get x minus 7 equals 64. Add 7 to both sides. Um, and I get 71. So, 71. All right, on the back side. All right, this is an old problem here. So g of 4. So if I'm going to plug 4 into this, I have 5 times 4 plus 7. Oops, I'm just getting an answer. I get 27. Right. Here, I'm doing f of g of x. So I'm plugging g of x right there into f. So 2 something minus 3. So that would mean I would um, put this here, 5x plus 7. So this one's just going to be another expression. So I get 10x plus 14 minus 3. So my final answer is 10x minus 11. So it's just another problem. This guy, the easier way to do this is to find f of negative 2. That's the thing I can figure out, and then plug that into g. So if I put a negative 2 here, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, and negative 4 minus 3 is negative 7. So now I'm just doing g of negative 7. So just like I did up here, 5 times negative 7 plus 7, because I'm plugging it into there. All right, so negative 35 plus 7, so 28, negative 28. All right, over here, remember our end behavior. So this is back in chapter 4. So chapter 4, if you want to go study that. But it all depends on the exponent, the degree. So this is an even. So even and negative, so even means both sides go up, negative means they would both point down, flip over, right? Reflection. So I need these answers to be negative. Yep, there it is, letter B. All right, this is an even, but it's positive. So that means that both are going up. So I need both of these positive, so letter A. <clears throat> I got an odd. So normally an odd power, right side goes up, left side goes down. So let's do that last one first right side. So this side has to go up and this one has to be down. So there's an up and then left side down. So that's letter D. So this one must be letter C. Um, it's an odd power and it's uh, negative. So it means the right side goes down, left side goes up. <clears throat> so yep, left side up, right side down. Alright, um, over here we have a square root function. Okay, and when you look at that square root function, if you look from left to right, like if you move from left to right, when you hit the graph, it rises. So it has a positive slope to it. So that's increasing. So from 1 to infinity, it's increasing. You wouldn't say it's increasing at 1, but from basically right after 1, it starts increasing. In a decrease, none. doesn't have any. My domain is from 1 over, so 1 to infinity because it's touching 1. My range is from 2 up. 
Now a normal square root function would start in the middle. All right, this one's been moved right one and up two. So this one's called g of x. So to move it right one, I have to do x minus one. Oops, that's done here. So x minus one plus two, and I'm supposed to say the words here. Right one up two. And I just noticed the same, you know, one, one, two, four, so there hasn't been a stretch and a shrink or anything like that. All right, down here I have a cube root function. So I'm gonna graph that, left four and down one. Now a cube root function has these three little, if it hasn't been stretched, it has those three little diagonal lines at the center right here and like a diagonal of two other dots and it kind of comes lower and comes up through there and goes over. So like a little snake going across here. You can check it on your calculator too. Your domain, it's going left and right forever. And as it goes right, it goes up, left it goes down, so it's also going up and down forever. All right, I'm trying to find the inverse over here. So remember, those switch places, but they're basically the same. So you don't really need to worry about them switching because they're the same anyway. All right, let's find our inverse. So to find the inverse, I switch this to x, make that cube root of y plus four minus one, and I solve for y. So I'm gonna add one. Now I'm gonna have to cube both sides to get rid of the cube root. So x plus one is cubed, and now the y plus four is out, and I'm gonna take away four. So I'm going to write my answer. I get x plus 1 to the third and then minus 4. All right, last problem, a little review problem here. 54, <clears throat> let's see, it's 9 times 6, which is 3 and 3, and 3 and 2. So I'm going to get a 3 coming out. 3 multiplied by 4 makes a 12. Leave a little space. Put my cube root back with a 2. 3 goes into 12 four times and no remainder. 3 goes into 5 once, so 1y is out, and there are 2 left. Alright, that is it.